as well. All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another global as SIA Global Expansion Team Zoom. Tonight we're going to be talking about social media. We've got Fran. She's now down in down in Florida. She she likes to move around, but she's been studying social media and actually just got back from a a seminar of some kind, right, Fran, that you took a lot of notes at. So we're going to be going over that tonight. And I just finished a week-long class with LinkedIn. Uh, Mike Beverly actually turned me on to this free um, class, and I learned a lot. It's good to get a system down so that your social media is consistent and not so overwhelming. And the more consistent you are, the more people will start to get to know you. It's a slow process. It's not like you post and things happen immediately. It's an, you know, it happens over time. So it's very important to be consistent. So Fran, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here to share. And I just want to give a disclaimer up front that do not be overwhelmed. I'm putting that out there because as you just shared, you know, social media, there's so much to cover. And so we're going to kind of do a 30,000 foot view tonight, literally a flyover here of some of the main things that I took away and really just some tips and tools and trends just in the social media realm, not necessarily exclusive from this weekend's training. Okay, perfect. Let me just start with, I, I read, just bought this book. It's how to build your personal brand on social media. Um, it's actually written by the woman that I just took the class with. She and her husband, Scott Evans. And so in the beginning of this book, it, it says some things that I'll put in, um, I'll put on the post when we, when we post the recording, but I just want you to think about something, some of these things while we're going through some of the information tonight. So when you're posting on social media, you might want to be thinking about, or you definitely do want to be thinking about, what do you want to be known for? Because a SIA already has a brand, but when you're putting things on social media, you're not branding a SIA, you're branding yourself. You're branding who you are. So what do you want to be known for? And what are you an expert in? So that's question number one. Number two is who is your target audience? Are you targeting single moms? Are you targeting athletes? Are you targeting, um, you know, people that live in a certain geography? Are you are you targeting a certain age group? Are you targeting mostly female, mostly male, a mixed bag? Think about because if you're marketing to everyone, you're part you're marketing to no one. So, another thing to think about is how do you describe yourself or your business simply? Because remember, on social media, it's sound bites, short, sweet, to the point, not long, drawn on sentences. And why should someone buy from you versus someone else? What makes you different? And and how do how do you want people to feel when they consume your content? What social media platform will you be focusing on? LinkedIn, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. What's your, you know, platform of choice and what can you do on social media to grow your personal brand? So those are a couple things to think about. And now we'll flip over to Franny and talk to her about, she's got 10 things that she wanted to cover tonight. So Franny, why don't we start with number one? Sure. Well, I just want to say something really quickly in terms of what you're talking about and for the audience today. Cindy and I did not have a conversation prior to this. It was just a simple text exchange, but many of the things that she shared, you know, I'm going to do a deeper dive into, but they're definitely consistent and commensurate with what I learned and, you know, not from this weekend exclusively. So just wanted to share that. And again, for those of you, I do believe that it is very important to take notes. You know, the Bob Goff expression that in order to live a noteworthy life, you must take notes. I do tend to talk a little bit quickly, so please apologize. Um, it is being recorded, so you can go back and listen, so I want to share that. So the first thing, and these are not in order. In fact, they're they're definitely out of order, but um, similar to what Cindy was just sharing, that it's really important that you have compelling copy, because if your copy is not, that's the first thing that someone's going to read. They're not even going to necessarily click on your video if they don't have a good hook or something that's drawing them in. Um, and I do want to give a shout out to Mike Beverly. Um, he was attending and he definitely learned so much and gleaned so much. And one of the things he shared was uh, one of the um, presenters shared that your hook should really be no more than six words. 
So when you're trying to draw that person in, you really want to make sure, you know, um, you might say something along the lines of, um, I had it all wrong. And then people are like, what, what does she have wrong? They want to know, right? Because it makes you that much more human. So that I think is really important. So that will get people to stop the scroll. And then hopefully that click will become a client, you know, so that you're kind of moving along. So that's number one. And you know what, let me just interject real quickly, because before we went on recording, we were talking about the importance of being authentic. And we were talking about, you know, don't be intimidated, go do it messy, you know, just be you, be real, people like that. In fact, if you're too slick and too fancy and too perfect, it actually turns people off. So, you know, you know, don't, people just want to know who you are, who you really are. And, you know, what you like to do, what are you made of? You know, what are some things that are, that are, that you're known for? You're, you're already branded. You just have to become aware of those things that you naturally do that you're passionate about. So just a a note there, Franny. And I do, this is not one of my 10, but just to, you know, piggyback on what you started with in terms of the brand, you know, think about your own personal brand, you know, or, you know, brands that you buy, whether that be, you know, Patagonia or REI or Lily Pulitzer or Nike, whatever that brand is that you're wearing or representing, you know, you're making it an emotional connection to that thing, whether it's, oh, wow, Tiger Woods has the same shirt or whether it's, you know, this Lily Pulitzer, you know, it's fun and festive or colorful. You're not a there's not a logo that you're connecting with. You're connecting with the emotion. And so it's really important because people connect with emotion and people. So I think that that's important to share that as well in terms of the vulnerability that you put out there, what you're drawing from people. You know, I post my platform is faith, fitness, and fun. And I post a lot of things of me in a sports bra or me in a bathing suit. And believe me, (laughs) not for likes or anything like that, but it's simply to be vulnerable and say to people like, look, I've got cellulite, you know, and people are like, wow, that was so brave of you. And I'm like, look, like that's real. Like pretty much everybody has it. So that's important as well. And one um, thing to think about, so, I, and we're, we'll, we'll get through this. I know we have a half an hour, a lot, of, lot to cover, but ASEA will be a household name. And so when you think about Kleenex or tissue, you don't think of, you don't call it tissue, you call it Kleenex. Mm-hmm. Now there's other brands of, of tissue but we call they 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 own the brand, so they're we call it Kleenex, whether it's actually made by the Kleenex company or not, right? When you think of a soda pop, a lot of people just call it a Coke. You know, they might not literally want a Coke, but Coke really owns the soda pop realm, and so they've really you know own those four uh, squares in the center of the chessboard. And when people think about redox signaling molecules, which they're not doing right now, but they will one day. And when they do, they're not going to say redox signaling molecules. They're going to say ASEA. So this is the brand that ASEA is working so hard to create. And then we are attaching ourselves to that brand. But why? There's a lot of people that promote ASEA. Why should this person buy ASEA from you? That's why your personal brand is important. So let's go from there, Franny. Sure. Great. Um, the second thing is automation is the new at home meeting. <laughs> so before I know many people in ASEA have been in network marketing for many years and doing meetings and, you know, face to face, belly to belly, if you will, and automation is key. And so having literally an autoresponder, whether it's, Hey, click here to, you know, book a link on my Calendly link, or, Hey, here's my money chat. Here's the guide you just suggested it's very much an automation. And a couple of people talked about those, um, the way in which they use this in their business. And the one is many chat, M-A-N-Y, many multiple, many chat. And so that's a great one you can install. It does not work on TikTok, but it does work on the other major platforms where if you have something that you're having people an opt-in for people to click and buy that they can do that. The next one, we often hear, you know, ready, aim, fire, and it's actually the reverse. (laughs) You should aim, know what you're wanting to say in that post, know what you're wanting the person to do, know what the focus is first. Just like if you're running a marathon, start with the end in mind, have your aim first, then fire, do it. Because oftentimes people are afraid to take messy action. They're like waiting till they're ready. They're waiting till things are perfect. And that is not like we were saying, you know, the messiness of, of real life and the vulnerability you're putting out there. So the next thing you do is just start, you know, throw it out there, go ahead and fire away and then course correct and say, okay, 
that flopped <laughs> or, well, you know, I got a lot of comments about that. How can I do more of that? That's where you're going to get, you know, the clarity comes from action. So the more that you're doing that and throwing things up, you know, B uh, Harrison was also there this weekend and she said, I got my first reel. She was like, it's stunk, but I got my first reel in 161 views. You know, that was exciting and she did it, you know, and I think that many of us are afraid to put things out there because it's not perfect or it doesn't look like, you know, this one follower, this influencer that you follow. So that's really important. And just to add on to that, it's really important to put a call to action in your post. So don't just put things up there. Tell them what you'd like them to do. If they, if you know, if this interests you, then you know, DM me or you know, like me, give me a thumbs up, whatever you want them to do. Give them a call to action. Move mm -hmm. them forward so that they're not just scrolling past your stuff, but they're actually stopping and doing whatever action step you're asking them to do. So think about that. Right. And Donald Miller, who is business made simple, he has a great expression that he says, make everything calorie free. People don't want to have to consume. If you're asking three questions at the end, you know, what's your favorite thing? Or when was the last time you, and you're like, it, people really like a yes or no, a this or that, you know, are you a beach person, a mountain person, you know, and really just having something like, like, if you agree or drop, you know, like you're saying, drop me below, if this is you, you know, something like that. And then the other thing about that is it's really important to go back and engage with those people. You never know. I mean, we all know in ASEA that we've talked to somebody six months ago, and then here they are now calling us. You never know that small little connection with that person might have huge, you know, benefits. You have to plant the seed though, in order for it to, you know, in order for it to reap a harvest. So, and you know, just one thing there is that it depends on the platform that you're using, because I never had any luck with polls with Facebook or Instagram. I just you know, maybe it was me. I just didn't have any luck. But on LinkedIn, I'm posting polls. You know, LinkedIn is a much more cerebral platform. So right. it's a totally different vibe. It's not so emotional. It's yes. much more professional. Yes. Anyway, I've been posting polls and getting tremendous. I just had over 2000 hits on this poll that I did yesterday. I mean, unbelievable. And the other thing about LinkedIn, you have a lot of silent lookers. And which is the same with all social media, just, you know, you know, with same with LinkedIn and, and TikTok and, and Instagram, all of those, just because, you know, they're not saying anything, they're not liking it or, you know, commenting doesn't mean they haven't seen you. And that's the, the important of consistency. If they're, con if you're constantly up there and you're not bam, you know, bombarding people with your sales talk. I mean, you're just a human being. That's one part of your life. But talk about the other parts of your life. What else do you do besides work? Right. I mean, hopefully you do something else, right? Right. Hopefully, yes. Make yourself the one lady said, she goes, I realized I'm not that interesting. One lady this weekend said that. And, you know, everybody has something, but what you don't deem as interesting, whether it's crocheting or knitting or playing with your grandchildren, that might be the connection point for somebody. And I think that's really important to also recognize too. One of the things I often say, Cindy, is, you know, I've been doing social media for several years and um, helping people with it. And I'll say it's like dating. Now I'm single. So this, you know, really relates and resonates home to me, but it's like dating. You don't go on a date and just expect at least, you know, perhaps this day and age, but you don't expect someone to sleep with you on the first date. So don't make that first interaction. Do you want to buy a SIA? Do you want to buy a SIA? Like, have that conversation, keep it going. Just ask like, oh, well, tell me about your kids. If they say, oh, my, you know, my little one has eczema. Oh, wow. Tell me how did that start? How long, what are the treatments are you using? Have you been, you know, seeing someone for this? You can really tell a lot if someone is seeing a naturopath or a chiropractor or a Reiki practitioner, you can tell a lot versus, oh, well, yeah, they've been on this med for six years and we've been trying to, you know, figure that out. So you can really gauge a lot. And then you ask just simple, as we know, questions are the answers. You just start asking those questions just like you would on a date. You know, you just don't want to be all about me, all about me. And, you know, and I, it should not be about you, right? You're, you're engaging with a person, you're drawing them into your world. Yes. That is about you, but you're really trying to get in that person's head so that they're like, oh my gosh, is she speaking right to me? You know, that they're so dialed in, your messaging is so dialed in that they think it's right to you. So, and so that if you're a person of value, the reason that somebody's going to constantly, they're going to follow you or they're going to log into your information, they're going to bother to read whatever you post or whatever, it's because you're, you're offering value. You're not just trying to sell them stuff. You're, you're offering information that's going to bring value to their life. They're going to learn something. They're going to, 
you know, laugh. They're going to, you know, they're going to connect with you in a, in a way that's important to both of you. So right. think about being a, a, a person of value, you know, think about if somebody's a used car salesman and all they're doing every time you turn around is trying to sell you this used car. It's like, oh my gosh, would you please go away? You're like a mosquito, you know, right. but if right. they're, just, if they're, if you learn about the, the multifaceted part of them, then they're right. much more interesting. And that's, that's really what we're doing here. Right. Well, and that relates to this too, in terms of, um, you know, really knowing your people, like your vibe attracts your tribe. And you mentioned this in the very beginning, speaking about the book, um, in terms of branding, you know, not everybody is for you. Not everyone is, you know, there's so many of us and what might resonate with you with one person might be completely differently for me. You know, my age group might resonate my, obviously my gender, there's so many different things that might resonate, but whatever you put out there is usually going to be what's going to be returned to you. So when you make it all about you, like, oh, look, here I am on my trip in, you know, the Netherlands. And they're like, oh my gosh, this lady, all that she does is travel. You might seem untouchable. You might not seem relatable to them. Whereas if you're just like, I had a really crappy day and I'm showing up in my messy bun, you know, after the gym today, they're like, oh, she's just like me, you know? Now, if that's not you at all, then don't represent yourself something you're not, but you really want to be very authentic with that. So I think that was my other thing, you know, know the people that you want to work with as well, because you might find, I mean, I think we all probably have had somebody that we've worked with somewhere in our careers where we're thinking to ourselves, wow, that person's not really, uh, they're, they're not like, I mean, not that you don't just with people like you, but if they're going to be on your team, you want to be able to have some endearing qualities about that person that hopefully is, is going to be able to reflect, you know, a different ray of light. So, okay. This is a simple little tip for anyone. And I want you to try this tonight. Um, you, when you're done, I want you to go and put a color block post on Facebook. This is the, the tactical, practical side of this. So simply what that means is you go to where it says, write something like right in there, you know, right underneath your own little profile. And there's a color block. Now, this is a little fun fact that blue, thankfully the C is blue, blue background with white writing is the number one. Um, it's a visual for people. It's the most easy and eye appealing black is too stark. Whereas if you use a blue background and nothing with a lot of, um, you know, flowers or anything with the emojis on it, there's a couple of different backgrounds, but Facebook loves when you use their features. They love when you're using something that's an organic feature from them. Um, and this is another little aside. You don't want to put a link. Hey, go check out my YouTube channel. Hey, go and look at our Sia, you know, shopping cart page. You don't want to put that there. You would simply say, drop me below or send me a DM if you would like, because once you then go into your DMs, you can share away and put those links in there. But again, it's like dating, you know, Facebook is a jealous boyfriend, all platforms want you to stay on their platform to give their, you know, their watch time. So you really want to make sure that you're not directing someone off because it lowers the algorithm for that being served little FYI, so that your face, your post won't get as much engagement, but a simple little, just, a, you know, it limits your characters when you do a color block post. But here's the other thing with that, with the branding you just mentioned too earlier, Cindy, if your color is not blue, if you're red or yellow, use those colors. You want to really start having people when they see that, when they're scrolling through, oh, she always has good, good posts to share, you know, and it could be a fun fact. Like, did you know, or it could be a Monday motivation quote, you know, it could be something like read this. You need to know this, you know, you deserve to know this. I always think of Chuck Gates when I hear that. So, Absolutely. you know, put something out there. I wanted just to make a quick mention. One thing I learned in this in this class that I just took was LinkedIn really frowns on emojis. So do not put emojis in LinkedIn posts. If you're doing it in Facebook and, and Instagram, that's fine, but not on LinkedIn. You know, mm -hmm. they really frown upon emojis. The other thing I learned about is, um, you know, on Facebook, Instagram, oftentimes you have a lot of hashtags. Mm -hmm. Well, in LinkedIn, the number of hashtags you should use is three. Just three. Um, that's so, good to know. Yeah. And in FYI for Instagram, it's about 10. They used to have 20 um, was kind of the metric if, if they would you know, suggest. Now it's about 10. And if you don't know what a hashtag is, um, you know, you can go look that up, but it's pretty much like a card catalog. I say back in the day, it's a way for you to search through something and, and find something a little bit more easily. Okay. So, and you could even, you guys, we were talking earlier, you know, find your person, know who your person you're talking to. And think about the people who you have on your team or who perhaps have been interested. Again, if you're saying something to everybody, you're not speaking to anyone. And so really just put something that's like struggling with eczema, psoriasis, or other skin issues. 
drop skin below. I'll, and then, you know, I'll share something with you that you deserve to know about. You can put something very simple like that in a color block post, you know, very, very simple. Okay. Next is systems equal success. <laughs> and that is really important. And I think that's one of the biggest things that I've struggled with. I've been a business owner on my own, but I've had to find my own system. And then the network marketing is brand new for me literally this past year. So I'm like, oh my gosh. And I feel like people are falling through the cracks. And so they did, um, they shared about Teamsy. It's T-E-M-Z-Y. And then they also shared about clothes. They shared several of them. They used, some lady used Google Sheets. There were several different things. And again, whatever works for you. If somebody is more of an engineer-minded person, a science person, a Google Sheet or an Excel spreadsheet might work a little bit better for them. They might be able to track sales more differently. I'm more of like a Trello. Um, I did, there is, Teamsy does have a 14-day trial where you don't have to enter a credit card. I um, mean, it's specifically made for network marketers. Um, I'm meeting tomorrow with a gentleman who designed his own for network marketers. I just want to see, he's going to do a demonstration for me because I need to have something where this team Z that they demonstrated this past weekend. So you would put in like, oh, I met this person on LinkedIn. And then you set a timer or schedules, you know, contact me in three days. And then they pop up in three days. And then it says, don't forget to reach out to this person. So it's pretty fascinating because I think we all have sticky notes and notebooks of, oh, where, who was that person? But you can put notes in there. You can put, if they bought something, you can put what links you sent them. You, it's really a nice platform. And they also have an app. So you can just simply add it to your, you know, do it while you're on the go. As we always say, work from your phone, not your home. Absolutely. Next is oh, one, just one thing to inter interject is that you, you, cause systems is so important. If so what they're te what they taught in this LinkedIn um, seminar is that you should have us every day you wake up and you should have your social media system down. And so they were talking about sharing, po uh, reaching out to 14 to 18 contacts, five days a week and posting three days a week. So you have, and that's what you do every single day, every single day in a LinkedIn. If you, if you reach out to connect with more than a hundred people in a week, you're going to get an, in trouble. So, and you want to stay away from their, um, you know, their, their radar, as far as being some kind of spammer or something like right. that. And the other thing is that if you do not use any kind of automated software with LinkedIn, where they're doing the automated software is doing the work for you, they'll catch you and they will terminate you from the platform. So do not use automated software. We're very helpful to know for those people who might be using that. So, okay. Next is um, they talked about the importance of onboarding. The one lady who presented, she's She's done in three years, $9 million in sales. I mean, she's just flying through the, through the roof with this. And um, she said that what she does, and I think this is brilliant. I made a little guide this year and it was way too long. It was like 25 pages or so. And it was like, click here to look at this website and click here to watch these videos. And, you know, here's Dick Walker. It was too much. But what she said was she gives them in the next 10 days, do this. And what happens is because people were saying, oh, well, when do you do one-on-ones with your team? And she said, if somebody comes to me and she says to them, great, I'll meet with you, but did you do steps one and two? And then they say, no, she goes, we'll go back and do steps one and two. She goes, I'm not meeting with you. And day three was your brand. So days one and days two. And the reason why they said this was extremely important was because if your team, your team member has a win in those first 10 days, the um, statistics of them staying with it are much, much higher. And I'm sure you guys, again, I'm new to MLM. So I apologize for my ignorance there, but she was saying that just give them something very simple, literally hand hold it with them. It doesn't have to be anything major as do a color block post, say this, you know, they literally spoon feed it to them. They literally make it calorie free so they can have that win. they can get that, you know, order in it, they'll walk them through how to do that. So that was really important too, because again, the onboarding piece, I think we all, um, she was saying that she was having, you know, her team exploded very quickly. And then she had all of a sudden 300 calls a week of this, you know, people wanting to reach out to her. So she had to streamline it. And then of course, you know, a kind of a point and assign different leaders within her organization to take over different elements. So that was really great. So when um, you're talking about onboarding, you're saying getting people started in social media, right? Yes. And there's our specifically social media. She said that she hadn't done a Zoom or a three-way call with a single associate in years. Hmm. So that was super interesting to me because I, you know, I know that that's 
that's what we do. You know, that's what I keep on hearing, which is fine. You know, there's different strokes for different folks. What might feel comfortable? Do, if it's working for you, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but don't also about, be so reticent to not try something new. Let's talk about that for a second, because ASEA is very different from a lot of other network marketing companies. And so, you know, if you're selling something that people are familiar with, you can, you know, do a lot of stuff on social media with no one-on-one -on -one interaction. What I've found with ASEA is that that is not the case. So yes, you can get exposure on social media and you can, you know, find new contacts in social media, but that personal conversation is absolutely critical when you become a real person who genuinely cares about that person, about their lifestyle, about their financial dignity, about their health. I mean, that's where ASEA is different. We're not just selling widgets and, you know, right. things that people are familiar with. We're we're bringing a discovery that's never been on the planet before. So don't, don't forget that when it's you're marketing. That, right. Yeah. right. Well, and I think the other thing about that is too, is that, um, you know, using like voice messages, like I use that on Instagram and Facebook all the time. And I'll just say, oh my gosh, Cindy, that was wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that you were a former RN, you know, you're a retired RN, um, you know, have, where, you know, what are some of the things you're doing now? You know, are you giving back or, you know, you kind of open up that conversation. And again, what you would do in a 20 minute zoom might take you a little bit longer, you know, several conversations back and forth or typing things out. But sometimes, you know, what we find is um, a lot of people who are a little bit, you, you know, younger, they'll, they don't want to necessarily hop on a call at a time. You know, I was just watching a, a reel today and he was saying this generation doesn't really know how to use phones as a phone, <laughs> you know, like to actually call people. So very interesting. Um, next was um, AI. They showed you guys, I was blown away. It was a video software where it would be like, just like Cindy and I having a conversation right now, I would not be talking. It took my voice. It moved my lips. I didn't have to do a single thing. You simply, it's a word document. You type in the words you wanted to say. You make a short video of yourself talking, and then it literally moves your lips for you to say that script. And you can change it. You can go back and edit it. So if you're like, oh, you know, Sydney sold 12 tubes of Renew this week. And then next week you could say, Sydney told, sold 21 tubes. You could just change that part and AI changes it for you. So I say that because it's kind of creepy and kind of freaky. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can use it. I use it a lot for give me a title like Instagram um, post or, you know, Instagram hook about, you know, stretch marks or whatever, you know, that might be. And then I'll give you some really great ones. Now I recommend not always using, you know, theirs. You want to make it in your own voice as well. That's where your authenticity will come through, but look them over, get some ideas from that and use it as a springboard. So AI, and I use Claude, Claude.ai, it's C-L-A-U-D-E dot AI. Um, but some people just use chat GPT. I have found Claude easier to use, and then it's also a free version as well. So FYI to that. So next is, um, you know, as we all know that your niche makes you rich. And really, as we were just saying a few minutes ago, you know, money is in the messengers. When you're responding to people and you're connecting with people and you're looking at their stories and you're just saying like, oh my gosh, that's such a cute, you know, dress or wow. You know, you're just, again, engaging, like you were mentioning the 14, to 18 people on LinkedIn, you're having conversations that are just showing people love to be seen. People love to have you respond to their polls. So if they're putting something out there, um, you know, that's just really showing that they're, they're part of your ecosystem, if you will, they're part of your environment. So that's really important. Hey, just real quick, um, you know, what you said about leaving voice messages as opposed to just text messages on the phone when you're connecting with people. It's so critical what you just said, because only 7% of communication is the words that we say. The other 93% of the communication is body language and tone of voice. So they don't have body language because you're in, you know, unless you're using this AI that you're talking about, <laughs> but if, but if it's a, just a voice memo, at least they're hearing your, your, that you're alive. You've got expression. You've got, there's a lot that comes through in your tone of voice as opposed to just reading the words. In fact, there's a, a lot that gets lost in translation right. if you just tap on the words. So just a piece of advice there. Very much so, very much so. And then lastly is, and this is what we talked about, you know, at the beginning, and again, we didn't confer before before this call, but really being unique, Y-O-U, you know, being yourself, putting yourself out there in a way that really, 
that really just showcases who you are, the fun about you. And then I think the other thing about that is too, is that again, what's going to work for Cindy is not necessarily going to work for me and my people. My vibe is very different. You know, she's a ski mountain girl. I'm a beach sun girl, you know, not that you're not, but you know, the, that's going to really resonate with different people there than, you know, for me perhaps. And so I think that's really important is just to identify, okay, who am I? You know, and I think that's a tough question. That was a question that, you know, if you really think, sit and think about like, who am I and who do I want to attract into my sphere, you know, my sphere of influence. And I think that's an important thing to really kind of dial in before you move forward, because you do need to offer something to somebody. And so it's not necessarily click here for my shopping cart, come up with something that's very simple. It could be five tips for, you know, fighting chronic pain or, you know, managing chronic pain um, without using medication. It could be, you know, um, something simple. Like for me, I actually made up, I told Mike today, um, I'm calling it dumbbells and devotion. <laughs> and I'm making a little devotional up for Christian women who want to get stronger spirit, mind, and body, you know, like that's hopefully going to be something that's cute and kitschy. And I'm going to say, click for the dumbbells and, you know, click Devo below, and then they'll get that. And the reason why I say that's really important, you guys, this is, and I have this actually, I don't know which number, but I'll just say this and no, where, no matter where you are politically or whatnot, we know this year is going to be a little bit charged because of everything. And Facebook, we probably all have seen some scams popping up and people are posting things. I had a really dear friend who literally just lost her entire platform of almost 2,500 people. And they, this is an aside for everybody, start collecting their email addresses because if you get shut down for whatever reason, a scam or whatever, or say something politically um, against other beliefs, you own their email. And Donald Miller said that every email address you collect is worth $25. And that's the exchange of people giving that email address away. And then make sure that you re reach out to them. Once you have their email, do something with it. Don't let it sit there for three months until you're ready to sell, you know, a new collagen product. Go ahead and engage with that person. You send them out a weekly or, you know, twice a month, you know, email that just says, hey, here's a little motivational, you know, something for you. But I say that in terms of the um, the spamming that happened. My friend, this is for everybody to know, they sent her an email. She had a two-factor fa two authentication on her um, Facebook. They sent her an email and said, hey, you've been mentioned here. When she, and it said Facebook, but it was something like Facebook123 at gmail.com. She just didn't look at the rest of the email address. She clicked on it. By the time she clicked on it and was like fumbling through the page to see her feed, they went in, changed her password, her profile picture, and the cover, cover photo, very similar to what happened with uh, Healthy Self. And they went ahead and they completely shut it down. She couldn't even report it. So yeah, be very yeah. careful. Be very careful about clicking on things. Don't get going so fast that you're not, you know, that you're, that you lose your wisdom. Yeah. Um, the other thing is just quickly, and we were at the bottom of the half hour, so we're going to wrap up on there's tons of nuggets, lots of, lots of little gems in this little talk. So make sure you go back and listen to the recording. If you want, you know, names of, of apps or um, AI or, or, you know, to review any of this information, but one other cautionary note is you know, keep your post positive and don't, don't regardless of how you feel with religion, just keep religion out of it. And regardless of how you feel about politics, just keep politics out of it. It's kind of like going to a dinner party. There's two things you don't mention, religion and politics. So remember, this is a business. Yes, we get very passionate. You know, it's a mission. It's a movement. You know, it's much more than just a, a way to make money. But, um, you know, be careful that, you know, Franny said, it's a very charged time. People are very sensitive and they're very opinionated and they feel very strongly about, you know, their beliefs. So just be sensitive to other people's um, perspectives and outlooks out there. And, and, you know, just keep it, keep it neutral to keep, you know, walk your, walk your walk in a positive way and, 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 and just be careful of those two departments. Yeah. And it, you know, and it, it's, challenging because when I started, when I built my brand and my branding coach was like, look, if you're only going to work with Christian women, you need to be overt about that because you're going to talk about God. And you're going to talk about Jesus. And so for me, my brand is very much, you're going to get a devotional and I'm going to be putting scripture out there, but people know that. And it's also helped people fall off of my email list. And I, I pray for them. I wish them well, because they're not the people I'm going to market to. They're not going to come to my retreat and be like, what is this? Like we're praying every morning. Yes. That's what you're going to get when you come to a retreat of mine. 
So I don't want somebody who's not. So it, it can work for you, but you have to be sensitive to it, right? So just be mindful of it. But if that's part of who you are and that's one of your values, put it out there. Absolutely. And what Franny's talking about is you, you don't want to ambush somebody. You know, you don't want to be just being so general and so nonspecific that when they finally figure out who you really are and who, what you really are passionate about, they get, you know, bamboozled. Oh, I had no idea that's what you're doing, you know? So we, we're very upfront about the way we market the product, what the product is, you know, all kinds of things. And so, and, and, and to Franny's point, she's not marketing to everybody. She's marketing to her target people, you know, her tribe of people, which is not everybody. And some, when she markets specifically to that group of people, it's going to bring people in that are so passionate about that. And it's going to turn other people off and that's okay. Yep. So Franny, any final words before we wrap it up tonight? So no, I just want to share with everybody. I'm going to do a five day, little quick, little 10 minute, little mini series. If anyone wants to just send me an email and I'll put in the email in the chat over here. I could put my email. I'm just going to do February 1st, 2nd, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is going to be five days, 10 minutes. I'm going to show you how to use Teamsy. I'm going to show you some of these things we talked about today, how to use um, the chat AI or excuse me, um, Cloud AI. I'm going to show just a few of the things going into a little bit of a deeper dive because I know our time is, you know, time is up today. So if you want to send me an email, shine with Franny at gmail.com. And then I will just go ahead and add you and we'll just do a 10 minute zoom every day, 12 o'clock Eastern um, those days. And I'll just, one percent of your day is 15 minutes everybody you deserve less than one percent to devote to your business for learning some of these tools that could really help accelerate your business and move them forward so absolutely and just remember social media is you know usually one part of your strategy it's not your 100 percent of your strategy so you've got other you know other avenues of reaching people so don't get so one-dimensional that you miss out on you know the people that you're going to bump in at the grocery store so anyway fantastic Brandy, thank you so much for all your nuggets, all your notes and all your passion. Really appreciate you. And thanks so much for having me tonight. Absolutely. And to everybody, the rest everybody of you. for joining in. Good night. night. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>